Welcome to episode 2 Handies, I'm back! Now, today we are looking to change your improper fractions back into mixed numbers. This is the opposite of what we did for episode 1. So here we can see that we have 5 halves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They form an improper fraction which doesn't look that nice. So what we're going to do is change them back into a mixed number. How do we do that? Now, you should already know that the denominator 2 tells us that I need two parts to make a whole. So I have one whole here. We can make another whole by combining or regrouping another two parts into a whole. That leaves us with one little fraction here that is not enough to make a whole. So we'll just leave this fraction alone. One whole, another whole, and half. This gives us the equivalent of two holes and a half. In this second example, we are looking at a bigger improper fraction. We have 11 out of 4. So that means we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 quarters. So how do we get this into a mixed numbers? Again, we start by regrouping according to the denominator, which is 4. So this tells me I need 4 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4 to make a whole. So 4 quarters give me a whole. I can continue regrouping quarters. 1, 2, 3, 4 to get another whole. Let's check out the remainder. 1, 2, 3. Unfortunately, these little fractions aren't enough to give us a whole. So we'll just have to leave them as a fraction. So with that, I have one whole, another whole, and three quarters left. That allows me to change my improper fraction into two holes and three out of four. Hi Andy's. Now in today's video, we're going to look at a shortcut on how we go from improper fractions to mixed numbers. Some of you might recognize this example from the last example. Now in that last example, we realized that out of 11 parts or 11 quarters, we are able to group four quarters into a whole. And we were able to do that more than once. Now some of you might realize that this seems awfully similar to repeated subtraction or in fact division. So we actually found out that out of 11 quarters, we are able to put two groups of four quarters. Now let's see if we can do a division working to show this. Now 11 divided into 4. Or oh, I'm trying to see how many groups of 4 can I find in 11. So 4, according to the times table, 4, 8. 4 times 2. If I have two groups of 4, that gives me 8 parts. What happens after we've grouped the 8 parts? We'll be left with 3 parts left. So what does this working tell us? It tells us that there are 2 groups of 4. And there are 3 parts remaining which are not enough to form a group. So we write this as 3 quarters. So 2 groups of 4, which is in fact 2 holes and 3 quarters is exactly the same as the answer which we got above. Now in the next example I'm going to show you, I will not be writing the word groups. Let's take a look at the next one now. 31 fifths. So how many fives 
Or how many groups of 5 can we find in 31? Let's find out. Now in your 5 times table, there can be a total of 6 groups of 5 in 31. 6 groups of 5 will use up 30 parts. That leaves us with only 1 remaining part. So, the 6 groups of 5 have become 6 holes. This one little part left is not enough to make a hole. So we will leave it as a fraction, which is one part out of the five parts needed, giving us a fraction one out of five. 31 fifths is equivalent to six holes and a fifth. Let's look at the last example. 100 out of nine or 100 ninths. So again, you're not going to draw the model for this as it's a little too long. Let's use the long division method to check the conversion. Nine times one, that gives us nine. Nine times another one. So here we can see that there can be 11 groups of 9 in 100. After forming 11 groups, we are left with only one part out of 9 parts. This is not enough to make a whole. So one part is going to be written as one part remaining out of 9 parts required. So 100 out of 9 is actually equivalent to 11 whole and 1 9.